When conducting economic analysis, one needs reference points, anchors um, in, in some sort. In the semantics of economics, this is called stylized facts. Stylized facts are recurrent patterns of relationships between economic variables or between economic variables and financial markets. These patterns, these relationships are conditioned by the economic environment. For instance, you can have a situation whereby there is no relationship whatsoever between the unemployment rate and inflation, but if the unemployment rate reaches a very low level, you can have a pickup in inflation. These stylized facts historically are used today when conducting an economic analysis and they shape expectations for the future and are also used when formulating economic forecasts. Today, many people, many economists, including central bankers, wonder whether these stylized facts of before are still relevant, are they still applicable, or have we entered the world without reference point? Let me illustrate this with the following, and we can simply confront two very important economic variables in the United States. On the one hand, the shape of the yield curve. The U.S. yield curve has been inverted and very significantly so for quite some time following aggressive monetary tightening by the Federal Reserve. And on the other hand, the growth environment remains actually quite good. The now cost of Federal Reserve Atlanta actually projects a very significant growth rate of the US economy in the third quarter of this year. Now, this is striking considering that historically we have observed that an inversion of the yield curve tended to be followed by a recession. And today there's nothing that points to the imminent recession risk in the United States. So what's happening? I could even add to the complexity that financial markets have been in a risk-on environment. That is that investors have tended to look at the glass as being half full rather than being half empty. So what's going on? Well, there are a number of explanations that spring to mind when we try to understand why the economy has been so resilient faced with these aggressive rate hikes. One element, for instance, is the multiple shocks that we have experienced on the supply side and supply disruption. And that means that the order books of companies in the United States, but also in the Eurozone, are still pretty well filled. So that means that companies are pretty relaxed about the volume that they will be able to produce in the next several months. Another reason is that we are still in certain sectors experiencing a phenomenon of pent-up demand. This is something that clearly explains why the tourism sector has been moving, booming over the summer months. A third element of explanation is the income support during the pandemic, income support leading to excess savings that is now being deployed to underpin consumer spending. And finally, last but not least, let's not forget that the energy transition related investments are also an important support factor for corporate investment, for household investments, and as a consequence, they support economic growth momentum in the United States, but also in the Eurozone. All this can be summarized as a kind of situation that is very ambiguous, where, ambiguous, where we wonder whether there is a kind of a change in paradigm, an analytical paradigm of the work of an economist. Have these old stylized facts, have they disappeared forever, or will they make a comeback at some point? That ambiguity has important repercussions. It has a kind of an, an economic cost associated with it. And that is because, one, the job of a forecaster, the job of making economic predictions becomes more difficult. There is a risk that economic forecasts will become bigger than they have been before. We see that, for instance, with the forecast errors in terms of inflation. This is a topic for anybody producing a forecast. It's a topic that is important for anybody using a forecast. It's also a topic that is important for central bankers who have also been confronted with major forecast errors. It pushes central bankers, to quote Christine Lagarde, the ECB president, to be humble. And she's insisting on that point. She says that 
when we are humble about how good we can do a job in make, when making economic predictions, our credibility as a central bank will actually benefit. Now, there's another consequence which is important of that ambiguity about possible change in paradigm, and it is what is happening in financial markets. Financial market investors also have to wonder whether the historical relationship between inversion of the yield curve and recession will be restored or not. And that means that pending an answer to that very important question, they have a tendency to shorten their investment horizon. And this is quite logical. But it also means that depending on how the data evolve, there may be very significant changes in positioning when the data start to surprise in one way or another. And that would also mean that we would then see jumps in volatility, of course. I thank you for having watched Eco TV Week this week and invite you to join us again next week for a new edition. Thank you.